Thank you very much, everybody, and good afternoon. Today is Good Friday, and this Sunday, millions of Christians celebrate Easter and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. At this holy time, we pray that God will heal the sick and comfort the heartbroken and bless our heroes. As American families look forward to Easter, we're reminded that our story ends not in despair, but in triumph and renewal. Very appropriate, isn't it? I'd like to provide Americans an update on our ongoing efforts in the war against the invisible enemy. Before I do that, I'll have a couple of notes. Uh, the United States, in discussions last night with Mexico, Saudi Arabia, Russia, and in dealing with OPEC nations, uh, we are trying to get Mexico, as the expression goes, over the barrel. And Mexico uh, is committing to do 100,000 fewer barrels. Uh, the President and I spoke last night. We have a great relationship, great friendship. They're helping us very much at the border. They have 27,000 soldiers, Mexican soldiers, on our border right now stopping people from coming into our country. As our wall goes up, we're up to about 168 miles of wall. And uh, in speaking with the President, uh, they have a limit. Uh, the OPEC nations have agreed to a different limit, a reduction of about 23 percent. So what I thought I would do, and I don't know that it's going to be accepted, we'll find out, the United States will help Mexico along, and they'll reimburse us sometime at a later date when they're prepared to do so. And uh, we had a great conversation, but we'll find out how that all works out. As you know, they're trying to uh, get rid of the glut of oil. There's a tremendous glut of oil, and we don't want anything to hurt our incredible industry. We're actually the largest producer in the world now. So we don't want anything to hurt those jobs, those great jobs in Texas and North Dakota and Oklahoma and everywhere. We have uh, a tremendous energy, New Mexico, tremendous energy business, and uh, we want to keep those jobs. So we're, we're working on it. I think eventually it's going to work out. It may work out quicker than what most people thought possible, and maybe it won't, but it'll work out eventually. Our experts are monitoring the data from every part of our country having to do with the topic that we're here to discuss. In the midst of grief and pain, we're seeing clear signs that our aggressive strategy is saving countless lives. Uh, tremendous progress is being made, although when you look at some of the numbers, I just spoke with Governor Cuomo, we had a good talk. When you look at those numbers, uh, the numbers of death, people that have died, uh, it's so uh, horrible. Now, on the other side, you have the numbers of beds being used, we we're just saying, are substantially reduced. That's usually the sign that it's heading in the downward curve. Uh, so New York, we know where that is. But in the midst of all this grief and this pain, we're seeing these signs, and we're seeing them very strongly. And a lot of that has to do with the aggressive strategy in saving so many lives. We're saving so many lives compared to what it could have been. So nobody knows what the number is, but we had a number of 100,000 lives, as many as that is. It's impossible to even think of it. And that was the low end with a tremendous amount of work and a tremendous amount of, uh, you can call it many different things. Uh, our people had to be extremely strong and brave to be able to put up with what they've put up with. But uh, the minimum, if you did this, uh, social distancing and every other aspect, and I, I think I can say 90 percent, maybe even more than that, were able to do it. Uh, the minimum number was 100,000 lives, and I think we'll be substantially under that number. Hard to believe that if you had 60,000, uh, you can never be happy, but that's a lot fewer than we were originally told and thinking. So they said between 100 and 220,000 lives on the minimum side, and then up to 2.2 million lives if we didn't do anything. 
but it showed a just tremendous resolve by the people of this country. So we'll see what it ends up being, but it looks like we're headed to a number substantially below the 100,000. That would be the low mark. And uh, I hope that bears out. The situation in Detroit and New Orleans appears to be stabilizing. Uh, Detroit has really started to go up, and now it is stabilizing. And New Orleans is a uh, great place. I have so many friends there, they can't believe what's happening, but it's really stabilized. I spoke with the governor of Louisiana. And as you know, we're building them additional beds right now, the Army Corps of Engineers and FEMA. And uh, that is going to be done, and I hope they're not going to be very well used, because I think they've really uh, — I don't think they're going to need them, or certainly not very many of them. We built them a big hospital of a 1,000 beds, and now we're, we're in the midst of doing another 1,000. I don't think they're going to be using very many of them, and that's a good thing. There was a time two weeks ago when we said that's not going to be nearly enough. We're going to have to build more, but we wanted to wait to see, and I'm glad we waited. It just looked